and welcome back to LCA TV. My name is James Bromberger. On the couch with me is Mr. Michael Davies. And our two special guests now are Keith Packard and B. Dal Garby, who I guess we've all known for many, many years. A few years now. Gentlemen, welcome along. Thank you. Thank Great you for coming to back to again. LCA. I know. This, I mean, for you guys, you've been to many, many of these as well. I, I think I this is my 10th LCA. Ten. Wow. So we just had Matty Wilcox here who said he's been to 11. I've been to everyone since 2002 in Brisbane. 2002, wow. So that's whatever it is. 12. There must be something well, that brings you back here every time. What is it? Other than an airplane. The sunshine. The sunshine. Obviously. That break in ice, summer. And I thought it was ice cream. The ice cream is required because of the sunshine. I, 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 I gather this week the choice is uh, polar vortex or, you know, T-shirts and, and sunshine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But what about the technical content here? How have you found the conference over the years? Has it evolved and changed, or is it continuously at a high level? Or I, I think it's certainly changed. It has continuously been at a high level, but you know the the focus has shifted a little bit over time. Um, you know, when I first came, the the motivation to come that first year in Brisbane was that it was the first year there was ever a mini conf held before the conference, right. and it was a Debian mini conf. And I, I was that somehow. deeply involved in Debian, and that actually was the thing that motivated me to be here. And if you think about it, in those early years, it wasn't unusual to see sort of multiple distribution mini confs. Mm, yep. And there was a lot of emphasis on the Linux kernel and on what it took to build distributions. And today, you know, there are no distribution mini confs at all. The mini confs are all in sort of really interesting technical areas that happen to overlap with Linux and other open source. And so I think that's sort of a natural evolution. Um, along with the rest of the industry, Linux has become part of the context and the landscape. And Absolutely. we're focusing on the sort of more exciting upper layer things now. Well, this week we got to spend a day at the radio mini conf. Yes. Talking about software radio and other, other activities like that. It was like, you know, 10 years ago, we probably wouldn't have done that because the availability to do radio <coughs> technologies in, in free software was just not there. And, so, and indeed, we're focusing on different problems earlier, and now yep. those things are solved, we move on to... Move up as you said. Well, actually, I, I do remember, because we're here in Perth, um, this is my second time at an LCA on this Perth? campus in Perth, yeah, wow. and it was at <clears throat> the one here in 2003 Great. that uh, Hugh Lemmings and I first actually gave a joint talk and it was amateur radio related so okay. we were talking a little bit radio but that was in a mini conf and it was sort of trying to get people enthusiastic about the idea that we could do some things with linux and with radio and today everybody's talking about you know wi-fi things and about software defined radios and all kinds of cool stuff and it's certainly moved to a different level yeah awesome now keith um what have you been working on more recently i think you've been on all the whale and stuff haven't you no, fixing uh, X this last year. X? Yeah, we're just just takes one year? <coughs> Every year we fix a little bit more. Excellent. And this, work, this year we're focusing on fixing some of the multi buffering issues, that, uh, especially the, related to compositing managers and other core X technologies. Right. So trying to make things faster, use less memory, and yes. we're con going to continue using X for a long time to come, and it's best to, best to fix it up as quickly as we can. Excellent. Cool. And any interesting little pieces that have come up that has been horrendously broken but having to still work or anything that you've found that's been interesting? Well, I have a presentation going on uh, later this afternoon where I list about, uh, about six or seven little diversions I took along my way of putting my LCA presentation together. What, what time is that? Uh, that's, um, what time is that? 4.30 this afternoon? 4.25. Ah, yeah. excellent. Last talk of the day. Last talk of the day. And the good thing is we have a very exciting speaker here, so uh, I'm sure you'll keep the audience uh, uh, enthralled. Enthralled, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, Badal, you're on the slot immediately before, aren't you? Yes, actually, in the same room uh, right after the afternoon tea, I suppose. And uh, I'll be talking some about what I've unfortunately ended up spending quite a bit of my time this year on, which is uh, dealing with disaster recovery consequences yeah. that I never yeah. hope to have to do it ever again. And, yeah, and if I never have to again, that would be great, but I've certainly learned a, little, a couple of lessons along the way that I'm hoping to uh, help communicate to other folks on the off chance that they too find themselves all of a sudden being yeah. homeless. And, yes. Uh, yeah, we'll are, are we allowed to talk about what exactly happened to you? Yeah, sure. So um, obviously it was a, the, a massive fire that happened through Colorado back in, was it April? Uh, June. June. It <coughs> uh, started on June 11th, and by the time it was done, uh, approximately 511 or so houses had been destroyed. Wow. Uh, a couple of folks had died, and uh, lots and lots of folks displaced um, among us, mm. uh, among them us. And uh, yeah, you know, we're doing just fine. Everything's great. Um, we lost the house. We lost essentially everything that was in the house. Uh, we've been in that house for almost 27 years. So 
Uh, this is traumatic and pretty significant, but uh, very quickly we sort of started thinking about, okay, you know, that's done, it's gone, there's nothing we can do about it, what do we do next? You know, how do we move mm. forward from here? And so actually things have been you know, quite positive since then. Um, I'm very pleased, you know, we're making great progress towards uh, uh, starting construction on our replacement house on the property and all of that stuff's happening uh, since the beginning, uh, end of November, uh, the little side business Keith and I run doing. I was about to mention that. Rocket Parts is back in business. I was just mentioning it's back up and running yes. again. <coughs> we are back in business. Fantastic. Let's, let's talk about that for a little bit. So for people sure. who don't know, what, what are you working on? What is that Altruism Metrum project? So uh, Bita and I both fly high power rocketry, which is anyth anything, anything, uh, anything that goes to you know, 10 or 20 or 30,000 feet. Uh, with rocketry, and, and one of the requirements for the rockets is that we be able to uh, deploy the parachutes at reliable times and track and recover the, right. the rocketry. So we uh, we built we build computers for this, of course, mm -hmm. um, and the computers that we build are not, they don't run Linux, so they're, they're too small for that. Right. Um, but we build them with microcontrollers. Uh, the first products we had used an 8051 microcontroller, which is uh, very primitive. Uh, we since moved on to using ARM uh, Cortex M0 and M3 parts. Mm -hmm. Uh, to build our microcontrollers. We have sensors and we have uh, pyro ignition systems and we have radios and GPS tracking. And when BDL first, BDL and I first started this out, the, the division of labor was pretty simple. BDL did all the fun parts, building the hardware, and I had the drudgery <laughs> parts of building the software. Uh, how unfair, how <laughs> unfair. So. But didn't you also make use of uh, your, uh, your own programming language to do that for part of that? Oh, of a, course. A bit of nickel in there? Of course, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So all the, all the, it wasn't so much drudgery then, really, was no, it? No, no, no. Oh, and one of the things we did when we started is, um, I, I told Keith that when, when he sort of volunteered to, to help out with this, and that, that's kind of a long story that we actually told at other LCAs in the past, uh, yes. I guess most notably in Wellington in yep. 2010. 10, yeah. Um, <coughs> But wow. uh, it's long when, now. Yeah, when we when we agreed to, to, to work together, one of the uh, absolute uh, commitments we made to each other is we're going to do this 100% open source. Yeah. Not just that the software would be, but the hardware designs are all open. Right. All the design tools we use are open source. All, all the software, software tools, that we use the to debugging run. tools, right. everything. And the, the web storefront, the things we use for the financial back end, and basically everything up to the point where we're ready to ship a product, then we have to interact with software. Yeah. That we and uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. You know, you guys have uh, uh, luminaries in our community, and, and it's great that you can you know have this little side business, but you know you. You, uh, you you walk the talk, right? You know, you, you say that we believe in open source, so you're going to do it anyway. And, and even in a new venture, you know, no doubt there's uh, a few hiccups along the way in doing that. You just are committed to those sort of hiccups. Well, actually, we actually hiccups, have no hiccups. No, it's interesting. If you start out from the beginning saying that this is an absolute requirement, yep. you start doing things like um, selecting components like processors. Um, we would only choose. Um, a processing core to use for which we knew we had decent or could write, in Keith's case, decent open source tools to make yes, it all yes. go. And so um, what some people would see as challenges, we see as opportunities and a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, every time there's something that we need that doesn't already exist, um, you know, we get to roll our, our sleeves up and, and try to actually fill that gap. Yeah. Over the last year, for instance, we've been migrating from the 8051 micro microcontrollers to the ARM Cortex microcontrollers. Mm, yes. And there weren't packaged uh, ARM uh, embedded ARM tool chains for Debian, okay. uh, but there are now. <laughs> yeah, <Yay. laughs> it was an opportunity for us. Right. And then <coughs> I uploaded those uh, actually this fall. Excellent. That is so, fantastic, isn't it? So that was an opportunity for us to contribute our, yeah. our, some, you know, a little piece of what we needed.